You know how watching someone sip on a banana skin is supposed to be funny? Call it slapstick, call it schadenfreude, call it what you like. You'll get the same thing watching me trying to make the undercarriage on this Bristol Beaufort. Stay tuned right here on Gary's Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary, welcome to my channel and a big welcome back if you've also been here before. Now, today I'm continuing the build of the Bristol Beaufort in 148th scale from ICM. It's a lovely kit, it's a detailed kit, it's a beautiful kit. It's an intricate kit and today is where the intricate really takes off. So, I'm building the undercarriage, I'm building the engines and I'm building the mid-upper turret. By the end of this video, we'll be ready for primary paint. So making some great progress. Don't think there'll be that many more videos to come after this, to be honest, maybe one. Yeah, probably just with the one. Anyway, do please have a look at the video and do please watch it all the way through. The bits are in chapters for the, the various parts, but do watch them all the way through because there are things I got wrong and the things that I don't want you to get wrong because sometimes the instructions aren't clear, sometimes I'm an idiot. There's, there's various reasons why bits go wrong. I don't want you to waste your time and doing the same thing. So do please watch each bit first before trying to follow it through if you're building one. Now, if you like the video, I really hope you do, then please remember Imperial thumbs up on the like button below. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to make sure you get notification of future videos in this series and indeed of all my future builds. And of course, there's a big back catalog of videos for you to enjoy as well on my channel. Now, if you enjoy what you're doing today as well, a bit more concrete fashion, you can go through Super Thanks or you can go through any of my many partner programs. However, you can just kick back and enjoy the rest of this video. So I'm gonna make a start on the undercarriage, he says confidently. Right, so we're going to start the um, undercarriage. There's a lot of these bits of undercarriage are, that made these are easy enough to cut out, but then this, this basket thing here is really difficult. Uh, this, I'll sh see if I can show you a bit better at the top here. Maybe this, you know, it's got two arms. They've both got sprue feeds on them. And this is all going to be a bit tricky to cut out. Anyway, just take your time and take, cut the pieces out and then, I'll show you how to put them all together. Right, first of all is this sort of basket-like affair that goes um, on the leg. It's uh, the bar across goes towards the bottom here and it goes on the opposite side to this knobbly bit at the back, yeah? So it goes on this side. You'll notice I'm fixing this in two parts. That's because it broke. Um, it broke when I was trying to take it off the sprue and I would be doing this on the other side instead to show you how it's done but that broke as well so this piece I have to say is properly delicate I was really careful honest I was so careful with it and yet it broke so what I'll do is I'll just get these two bits together roughly in place and then glue them together um, it works with the other one, it looks fine. It's not structural in terms of the kit. It might be on the plane, I've actually no idea what these are for anyway. But the point is they, they do sort of, it should be a bar across here. Um, you know, this at 148th almost feels thinner than the one that's on the FX kit at 172nd. It is so thin. Anyway, I'll get that aligned properly and then glue it up and it'll be fine it'll be fine everything will be fine okay so first thing we've got to do is put this uh, cross piece in it goes in this hole on the side of the strut and then there's a squarish hole up there that the ends fit in 
Then there's another cross piece that sits into the small hole at the top here. Then all of these pieces have to fit into corresponding holes on the other leg. And that's where the fun begins. Trying to align all of these and get these straight takes quite a bit of faff. So I'll get on with it. I'll see you in a bit. If you have considerable manual dexterity, possibly use both hands and, and maybe a prehensile limb of which medical science was yet unaware that you happen to have, then these will go together eventually. Um, they do take a bit of fiddling around and faffing to get level and straight and all the rest of it. Put some weight on the ends because that way they'll keep straight as well. And then leave that well alone. Leave it to dry. Now you're also going to need to fit another part of the three ring circus we call undercarriage here. This is like a actuator ram. Um, and that needs to be a slight angle as well. Only a slight one though. So kind of thus. Okay, it's a really shallow angle, but it does need to be at an angle because once all these are set, we have the grand assembly. That's going to be exciting. And perhaps to soothe your brow whilst the excitement of that dies down, um, you might want to put the wheels together. Um, I've pre-painted them just because um, I wanted to make sure I could get the rims done properly whilst they're on the sprue because they're going to be a bit more difficult whilst they're not. Um, these aren't weighted, although there is a definite way they go together, a definite way round, they're not weighted. So anyway, glue them together and then you can sand down the, um, the, the edge between them and just repaint the top in. And then maybe do a bit of um, texturing as well, do a bit of, well not texturing, a bit of uh, dabbing of colour on there. You know, some dust or something, make them look a bit warm. Um, I'll show you what I mean when I come to it. A bit weathering, sort of, really. Okay, so, glue those together, clamp them in place. So, these various subcomponents of the gear are now whittled down to just three components. The trick is going to be, this leg has to sit on these forks here. Then... This piece here, with the ram, this has to sit in here so that the ends of the, these bracket ends here end up against those pointy bits there. The ram fits in here and then these two side points sit in the two holes here. Okay, that's the plan. I'll try and do it. Okay, so I think if I put this in first, it slots those two ends of this slot into the legs here. Okay, so they, so it kind of sits like this. And then the leg itself Pops in there, then into that. The ram goes in there, and then those pieces go in there. I'll just finesse all that together, and I'll show you. It'll be fine. Now, a lot of the time, obviously, you'll be using extra thin to do this. I honestly think you need proper glue. You need regular thick glue for this because. It will grab pieces a lot better than trying to dry fit them and then poking them around. Um, it's an impossibly delicate juggling act. That's got to go in there. The upper leg needs to sit in the socket of the fork.
then the RAM comes out of course so we put the RAM back in place and also these bits have got to damn this is difficult there we go that bit's got to go in there these bits have got to go into those sockets there these bits are in the bottom there that ladies and gentlemen as if by magic is the undercarriage leg done wow so that's one two three four five six seven pieces of plastic a spindly plastic um, and it's all fat, fitted together now I think I am going to take the rest of the day off no I'm not I'm going to keep building but I feel like I need to take the rest of the day off just to admire the insanity of this piece of design I mean the short sterling has got nothing on this really but there we go it's done the other one's done the two of them can dry properly now and I can get on with the engines which is grand because of course the engines aren't going to be complicated at all are they I mean you know you just join the bits together and then put on all of these pipes okay I think the uh, tweezers are going to be in action again okay the first thing we're going to do is put in this little pin it's the um, thing the propeller will eventually sit on so a short pin and it goes in there and we can just tack it with a little dot of glue like so if it sits out like that then the second bank of cylinders can fit against the first bank now what they are actually different sizes. The ends of this rear bank are different sizes, so you shouldn't be able to put them in the wrong way around. But the other thing to note is that they've got these little pipe things here, whereas the front, they've got two, the exhaust pipes. This must be the inlet pipes. Go into here, these, these things here, okay? And then, indeed, the inlet pipes can go in as such they should line up with the little holes on the backs of these cylinders to fit properly bit of a fiddly proposition I have to say that should be about it then this front support ring can go on as well um, I would just point out what on um, my one one of these was actually quite badly bent from being in the packet so do make sure that they're kind of straightened out before they go on the engine something else I really hope I can see when I finish this kit are these exhaust pipes okay these these are just the the I mean, if we're in from the front, the left hand ones, there's another set that are going to go around, which are the right hand ones because they have a different shape. And they are all very fiddly. So it goes onto the left hand port of the rear cylinder and the right hand port of the front cylinder. And there it is. All I can say is, I hope I can see this when the engine gets put inside its nacelle, its covers. Because otherwise, that would be really, really, really annoying. Also, quick note to ICM, it would be really nice if there's a little channel at the back of this, so that those pipes will sit in a channel. Maybe even put the pipes on first, then put the cover on the front I don't know anyway I'll do the other engine now right so I've painted the um, this like rear wall of the engine bay black and I'm going to slot on the 
cooling fans, cooling fins, fins, fans, fins, cooling fins. Okay, they just need to be um, lined up so that's in this, this pre drilled stuff is in the center like this. I would have thought it'd be useful to put something to help get it lined up, but there we go, there isn't. Then we can get the engine and slot it into place. He said confidently. There you go. Goes into place there. Then there are these intakes for each engine. These quite delicately go together. There we go. And then just use our favourite bits of extra thin maybe from the inside so we don't um, disturb the surface too much and this inlet goes on here except you can't really are a pain in the backside but they do go together you have to have the right one on the right side or they just will not line up then the <coughs> the air intake goes in on the top of the engine block there then the engine itself is covered by the cowling and that sits in place now it's it's just about there ish. See so the the back of the uh, ring here touches this inlet, but then this support ring sits against the front of the um, engine cover there. It's a really weird fit. Really weird. But the um, exhaust stack needs to be completed as well. Just like that. And just because I'm fairly confident I can get the turret in later, I will put the turret mounting in now as well. Just line it up. Like so and then glue it into place. There's a couple of pieces I must remember to put into the bomb bay while I'm here. That's that part there and and a piece that goes up against this bulkhead here. Moving on to the turret now, and I have to mount these two guns. They are incredibly fiddly, but they will go on. So this Lewis gun is mounted on its side. Then there's another Lewis gun, which sits on its little mounting pegs like this. There we go. A pair of Lewis guns. Then at the back of the assembly there's this little panel here. It sits over a peg there, like so. On the FX kit I remember this bit was a right pain in the bottom. This is the, the thing that sort of clicks into the ring of the turret and now it's determined this is the post in the middle that the gunner sits on and stuff like that 
on the airfix kit it had to be like hooked over and under and all sorts of stuff but here it just seems to sort of sit on top of it so I'm not entirely sure why maybe that's not as well designed more as accurately designed or I don't know just came from a different angle I don't know anyway that goes on really very straightforwardly okay next thing to do is to put the this sort of seat and mount assembly into the revolving ring of the gun and I'm just going to pop this onto a onto a block of wood so I can try and raise it up so that I can put it in place maybe just a bit bigger block of wood and now the gun mounts here yeah, can go onto the turret mount there's a couple of little holes, there we go, holes that they sit in. Pointing upwards like that. That is never going to sit in. That's never ever going to fit the back of this. That's kind of interesting. That's a real problem because that presumably has to now go, that can't go further up because the turret's in the way. So the turret actually can't go on with that back piece on. I'll have to investigate that. It is my mistake, gentle viewer. And yet, I do make a lot of mistakes. Now I had the this piece on here, on the front. In fact, it hooks right at the back here. That, you see, pushes the gun mount further forward and that will then fit in place so that's my mistake completely didn't look at the instructions properly so make sure you don't do the same thing as I did make sure that top bar of this mount goes right at the back of the pillar that was probably what Airfix were trying to do though I, I seem to remember you had to like hook it into there and then around the bottom but anyway that's uh, that's where it belongs with that little uh, mess corrected, we can poke the guns through the front of the turret and assemble the turret. The turret you can spray paint, you can paint by hand or you can spray. Um, I've used a piece of paper here with a slot cut through so that the workings underneath are protected from the paint. Sprayed it with uh, a basic uh, black primer, surface primer, and then I've put some matte varnish on it. The undercarriage legs have had the Vallejo metal colour system though, so there's a black surface primer we put on first, and then I've sprayed with aluminium, rather mucky aluminium pot here. That gives a nice shiny metal base, and then what I can do then is use some um, weathering oils uh, to put in some uh, muck and dust and grease. And finally what I'm going to do is just tack in this um, transparency with like two blobs of um, of the clear PVA we use for transparencies. Um, it's only there to hold it in place because um, I want to spray the whole kit. Uh, but eventually we'll be taking this off to put the gun barrel in and then putting it back on permanently. So with all the pre-paint done, I reckon it's about time to plug up the holes in the, for the gun turrets and for the engines and prime the aircraft and start painting it. Okay, so I hope you see what I mean. What an interesting experience building those bits and pieces are. Um, the engine, all those damned pipes, really, all the pipes. That, but you know, to be fair, if you look in the right light, with a torch, um, then maybe you can actually see, see them all and it's worth doing. It's worth doing if you want to do it. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. If you do want to do it, do it and they look grand if you have a close look. Um, the undercarriage uh, could be better designed, I'm sure, but maybe it's a solution to a problem created by Bristol's in the first place. But it gets together and it's sturdy when it's done, which is grand. Um, the turret, 
the least difficult of the option things to do today i think um, it works nicely so all those parts are done next video we're going to primary paint so we'll be doing the all over white and the extra dark sea gray and then we'll be doing some weathering and some panel lining and things like that and just generally giving the whole thing a bit of a going over and then hopefully we'll be pretty much finished I'll see, see how we get on. Not entirely sure whether I'm going to do the aerials just yet. I think I will, but I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video, and I hope you have, please remember, imperial thumbs up on the button below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Do hit the bell, then you'll get notifications of all the future videos. Thank you so very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye.